Now joining me in the studio is one of the key DFL members of that committee, Senator Melissa Wickland. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. According to the chair of the committee, Senator Jensen, the primary goal is to find ways to reduce the cost of health care. In your view, are there bipartisan ways to tackle the cost issue? I, I definitely think, think there are uh, bipartisan ways to do that. And I've been glad to have the opportunity over the course of the meetings to, to discuss topics that I think all members can relate to and relate to a sense of wanting to find um, solutions to them. So I think most definitely, you know, we'll come out of it with the, um, the goal of coming up with some um, either proposals for this session or beyond that can be bipartisan. Um, I think that we, we see in our communities that people are struggling, struggling with health care costs and, um, you know, the topics that were brought forward to us are ones that, that we certainly um, can look at. Um, we have saw some things that are big picture things. Um, the Minnesota Department of Health presented uh, about um, low value um, services and the economics of health care. And low value services are ones that don't necessarily, like tests and exams that don't necessarily have a medical benefit, is right. that right? Yeah, you know, things that, um, procedures or services that, that um, maybe consumers don't necessarily know that, that they're um, not needed. And how do we find ways to maybe um, reduce the numbers of those to help us reduce costs. And that would go to the idea of overtreatment. Someone comes in with a complaint and the doctor just orders a series of things that maybe are not medically necessary just to cover all bases. Is that kind of what you're talking about? Um, that would be that would be part of it. Yeah, there have been a lot of efforts going on. We had presentations about um, how employers are helping their employees um, the Choose Wisely campaigns that are going on to help consumers be more well informed as they go in to, um, to see doctors. On the other side, you know, doctors um, have become more informed about what best uh, practices are and, you know, how can we use their knowledge and the consumer knowledge to, like I say, uh, reduce the numbers of services that maybe aren't, aren't necessary. One of the issues that's made headlines, and I know the committee has dealt with, is the cost of pharmaceutical drugs. The issue has befuddled policymakers for a long time, including former Governor Tim Pawlenty, who suggested Minnesotans go to Canada, Canada for their prescription drugs. Mm -hmm. What can lawmakers and the governor do in Minnesota possibly to address the cost of prescriptions? Yeah, I think that's a really key issue that we did have um, a lengthy discussion on uh, multiple times during our meetings and I hope that we can um, maybe try to narrow down you know what can we as a state do some things are um, kind of out of our control and could be only done affected the change affected at the federal level but maybe as a state um, I think there's some discussions I, I had a conversation with one of my colleagues who's on the committee Senator Matt Klein um, and he's very interested in pursuing some discussions about um, how can we as a state look at um, managing costs. Um, we had a presentation about uh, the great variation in, um, in costs and um, could we put together something as a state at the state level to, uh, to be tracking costs and taking action if we feel that there's um, uh, going beyond what is uh, normal or expected price increases, um, and so that's that's one idea. But I think you know we'll have to discuss further. You know what is actually uh, possible to control within our state, knowing that that there are federal regulations that cover. Well, you, you mentioned variation in cost and. It's been reported in the Star Tribune and in other places, you know, the cost of a procedure in one place versus the cost of a procedure in another place. Mm -hmm. Is Could the legislature put something together, at least in terms of state-funded um, programs that would set limits or provide a standard cost for specific procedures so that it's not, you know, $3,000 at one hospital and $12,000 at another? Well, I think it's definitely something that we should look at um, because um, 
as you mentioned, if it is a state program, you know, we want to make sure that our, our state dollars are used wisely and uh, most effectively. Um, I think it will need to be a partnership with um, the, the plans, the providers, and with uh, state government to look at that. How do we better um, manage those costs? Because um, it, you would expect that there would be some variation, but um, as the Department of Health provided us um, statistics on key procedures, um, it really it kind of goes beyond what what you would reasonably expect is the variation. Um, there's definitely issues with um, geography and, and different parts of the state having different cost structures, but, but I think it's something that, um, that the state could play a role in looking at and trying to, um, trying to bring more management to, to costs that way. One other big area I want to touch on is the end of life conversations. I know that the committee heard testimony on some of that. Is there a role for the state to enkindle these conversations between doctors and terminally ill patients to limit unnecessary procedures that, that maybe don't even necessarily prolong life? What is the state's role, the legislature's role in, in tackling those conversations? Well, I think it's, um, it's certainly a very sensitive area. I think we have a lot of care and concern about what families are experiencing and, and how do they, um, how does their family member um, who is maybe going through um, hospice care or palliative care, how are they um, best able to access the right services at the right time? Um, I think the state can play a role to facilitate those discussions. Um, I think it's more difficult maybe to, to say we're going to <coughs> mandate any certain process for any given individual, but I think um, we heard presentations about um, different entities in our community um, working on that, um, trying to help um, not only their patients have a better experience at end of life, um, but also looking at, you know, what's the best use of our, our co of the costs and the, um, the doctor's role versus other providers who could um, help patients through end of life. Senator Wicklin, <clears throat> I want to thank you so much for your time today. Oh, well, thank you. And I, ho I really hope that um, as we come out of this, we have um, some recommendations that come forward from the committee that are, you know, bipartisan in nature. And then when we get to session, I hope that we are uh, having the vigorous discussion that we need about some of these. We know that, um, you know, we've provided uh, or had examples of ways to manage costs come forward in the past session. Uh, we've had some programs that were put in place, reinsurance and uh, premium rebates to try and help, help um, consumers with their premiums. But I think you know, we need to revisit some of those discussions, um, looking at things like the Minnesota Care Buy-in, which I was a co-author with mm -hmm. Senator Lori. Um, you know, having a chance to really dig into some of those solutions too, I think will be um, would be helpful and, and required. We're really in a state uh, where federal decisions are affecting us and um, I think our, our constituents expect us to have these discussions. There will definitely, definitely be more to come. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you.